Rate limiting is setting threshold on operations in a service, after which the service will return error. It's actually a simple concept, but a very important one, especially in a large-scale distributed system. Simply speaking, it is the amount of operations that can be performed in a given amount of time. For example, when you have a client, a server, and a database, and let's say you want the server to only take, say, two requests in five seconds. So if your first request comes in those five seconds, it will be processed by the server. And the second request comes in those five seconds, it will be processed by the server. However, if there is a third request within those five seconds, server will start returning errors for that third request and any other subsequent request in those five seconds. The server will, however, reset after those five seconds and start accepting requests, but only two requests in five seconds window. Now, if you don't rate limit a system or server, the server can be brought down by malicious clients. For example, a common attack denial of service where bad actors flush the system with a lot of traffic and ultimately bringing down the system. And doing rate limiting on your server or system can protect you from going down. Now, denial of service or DOS is easy to be prevented by rate limiting. However, there is an advanced version of DOS which is DDOS or distributed denial of service wherein a bunch of different machines flood your system with traffic from various directions and this is a lot tougher to rate limit because it is hard to recognize if the machines are working together or they are simply generating genuine requests in fact ddos attacks in the past have brought down sites like wikipedia and many gaming companies user-based rate limiting is one of the most common and intuitive forms of rate limiting wherein a limit is applied on the number of requests allowed for a user in a given period of time. Now, user-based rate limiting is not just the only way of doing things. You can in fact rate limit on various things, not just the user request. So let's say you have a social media campaign where you want to target only your US customers, but your website is available worldwide. What you can do is you can probably rate limit all your customers in the world except your USA customers so that Whenever a request comes from different part of the world, they are rate limited and your US customers are given the prime importance. Server-based rate limiting is another common type of rate limiting and this is generally employed when specific servers need most of the request for serving specific functionality. That is, the server are strongly coupled to specific functions and you want to rate limit any other calls coming for different functionalities from the server. Now, when it comes to system design interviews in FANG companies, I recommend you to at least have a high level understanding of the rate limiting algorithms. And there are a couple of them with few variations. Window based is the simplest approach to build a rate limiter, wherein you have a fixed window in which we cap the maximum number of requests in that fixed window of time. For example, say we are implementing a rate limit of 10 requests per minute and you have each window containing a counter of 10. So if there is a new request that comes in at say 12th hour, one minute and 45 seconds, it will be allocated to the window of 12 hour, one minute. And if the counter is larger than zero, we keep on decrementing the counter and process the request. Else, if the counter is already zero, it means it has already exhausted 10 requests in that window of time. So any other new request during that window will be discarded. As you can imagine, the biggest shortcoming of this fixed window algorithm is that if the counter runs out at the start of the window, all the clients will need to wait for a long reset window that only resets when a new fixed window starts. And it can also potentially lead to a sudden burst of traffic near the boundary of the window whenever a new window is starting because all clients will be waiting for the window to reset. Now there is a slight variation of this algorithm which is called a sliding window algorithm which is very much similar to fixed window except that it tackles the mentioned disadvantages here. In sliding window, you design a window which slides over the time. So whenever a new request comes in, it hits that window and based upon some calculation or weight calculation on the number of requests which have been served during that sliding window period, the requests are accepted or rejected. Now for system design interviews, you don't really need to know this in detail, but just know that there is a concept of sliding window which exists and tackles the disadvantages found in fixed window algorithms. Token bucket is another industry standard algorithm for rate limiting. It's just like you going to a cinema hall or movie theater 
and you got to purchase tickets in order to go to the auditorium and watch movie. Just like that, in token bucket, you have a bucket filled with tokens. And when an input request or packet arrives, we check if there's any token in the bucket or not. If there was any token left, we remove that token from the bucket and then forward the packet to reach its destination. However, if the bucket is empty, we simply drop the packet or request to the server. Now, after a period of time, which is also called as the refill time, the number of tokens in the bucket is increased by the refill amount. And over time, these refills will fill up the bucket to the maximum number of tokens. And so when a new request comes in now, the tokens are available and the requests get processed. However, if there are more requests, if there are burst of requests and not enough token available, the requests are simply discarded. Now, another favor of token bucket algorithm is leaky bucket. Now to understand leaky bucket, just imagine you have a tap and a bucket with a hole. The force of the water from the tap is variable in nature. Sometimes it is more and sometimes it is less. And the leak or the hole in the bucket ensures that the water comes out of the bucket in a fixed flow. So here instead of tap, let's think about a client application that is generating data. And the bucket here is just a window or buffer. And the leak in the bucket is basically a gateway. So here when the client sends a request or packet, the packet is thrown into the bucket. Since the bucket is leaking at a constant rate, meaning it transmits the packet or request at a constant rate from the gateway. So now if there's a client which is sending lot of traffic or burst of traffic packets to the server, that bursty traffic is converted to a uniform traffic because of the leaky bucket. Keep in mind the bucket itself has a fixed size to it. So if there is much more traffic than the bucket can handle, obviously the packets will overflow, which means the packets will be rejected. So for example, here in this graph, we have a client which is sending 12 Mbps of data until two seconds, and then there is no request from the client. And then later, the client is sending two Mbps of data. Now, because of the leaky bucket, that busty traffic which we got in the beginning is transformed or converted into a uniform traffic. However, if the clients keep sending 12 Mbps every one or two seconds, that data will overflow from the bucket and will be rejected and never served. When it comes to system design interview, depending upon the role you're applying for, you might not be required to know all these concepts in depth. At the same time, you might be also asked to design a rate limiter itself. Let me know in comments if you want me to cover that topic in more detail.